We previously discussed what a license is and that you might want to include one in your TTRPG related work, but how do I pick a license and then use it? Hello and welcome to Hessens County. I'm glad that you could join us again today for another TTRPG Talk. This series discusses tabletop roleplay games and related materials, world building suggestions, and game design. As I mentioned in our stinger, this video is building on one that I released less than a month ago. In that video, a creator named Andrea Popkovic, I apologize if I said your name wrong, otherwise known as Shooplore of Shoopy Games, asked, This is cool, but how? How do I do that? I totally understand this question, but I will admit I was initially reluctant to make this type of a video. As I mentioned previously, I am not a legal expert and certainly not a copywriter or, a, or an expert in contract law. I also do not want to unintentionally sway anyone towards, towards or away from any particular type of license or another. That should be an informed decision that best fits the product as well as the needs and philosophy of the creator, probably meaning you. To avoid that, I will not be going into any specifics into any one license except for mentioning some unusual details in this video. Rather, I will be focusing on a couple of important things that you should be considering when it comes to determining which license to use and also how you let people know which license it is that you are using within the actual text of your game. Now, the first item I wanted to mention is specifically intended for those of you creators who are making a derivative work. Derivative, of course, meaning something based off of somebody else's work. Before you even start making your game, adventure, or other material, you should determine if you are required to continue using an existing license based on the work you're, you're basing your game off of. Some licenses that give you the right to copy text or other elements of distinctive intellectual property may require that you use the same license for your own derivative work. Two examples of this would be the share-alike license, uh, versions of the Creative Commons license, and the ORC license. It is also, this is also a good time to determine if there are any other restrictions contained within the license that might make basing your work off of the original worthwhile or not. For example, non-commercial clauses require that you can make stuff, but you can't sell it. And other specialized agreements may contain clauses that require that you sell your item on a specific platform or only use the material to make certain kinds of derivative works. So like, for example, you might be allowed to make adventures or supplements, but not standalone games using the licensed rules text. The next thing you will want to do is to determine what it is that is all being covered by your license. This is important because it is not only potentially impactful on which license you use, but it may also influence how you implement that license and what language you need to include when describing your license. For example, maybe an author would like to make it clear that they want their license to include permissions to use the images and diagrams that they created to help illustrate the rules of the game in addition to the text itself. Some licenses like ORC will assume that elements like trademarks, world lore, story, story arcs, distinctive characters, and visual uh, art remain material that is reserved for the author's exclusive use. Therefore, our theoretical creation uh, using this license would need to explicitly state that they are waiving the right to reserve the images and diagrams in order to make them available for fellow creators to then use in, again, derivative works. Next, we reach the point where you really need to decide which license is best for you. Again, I am not going to try to sway your opinion one way or the other. But I would recommend that you very carefully read the text of the licenses that you are considering so that you can understand what is possible or not possible to do and if you're okay with that. 
please do not try to base your assumptions about these licenses on how other people in the TTRPG community are actually using them. Unfortunately, it is entirely possible that they may not actually be using them correctly. I mentioned in the first video uh, that uh, addendum clauses, for example, that make the rights of licensees more restrictive, like uh, anti-harm and bigotry statements that have become quite common in the TTRPG community, are not actually allowed under certain types of licenses like Creative Commons. Once you have all of that determined, now we come to the practical how question. How do I add my license to my game? The simple answer is that you just need to add a statement of legal intent to your manuscript. Normally, this statement goes in the very front of the book or PDF, uh, for example, on the inside cover, or on a page that is exclusively put aside, again, usually towards the beginning of the text, containing credits, attributions, and legal language. For very short texts or booklets, uh, like for example this one here I have uh, of one of my games called Fragmentary Folio, it is actually quite common to either create like a little box or somehow delineate the legal language by using a separate font or a different size or something and put it either like on the back, in this case on the back of the back page on this one pager or in a booklet either on the very back page or on the in on the bottom of like the third a page if you're doing like a, a, a folio of four of four pages. In fact, this is actually no different than if you were choosing not to license your text at all. For instance, you would need in, in those particular cases, you would need to have a statement like we have here in this copy of uh, uh, Gablonia by uh, Robert Turk. Uh, so in here on the first legal page, right, we have here, it says, I'm just going to go ahead and read it for you, copyright uh, 2022 by Robert Turk, all rights reserved. And therefore, and it continues on. Uh, this book or any portion thereof may not be reproduced or used in any manner whatsoever without the express written permission of the publisher, except for use in brief quotations in a book review. So here it gives you very clear directions on the times when you can use text directly from this book, either with that explicit written permission, so you have to ask your for your own individual license, essentially, or, again, brief quotations for book reviews. And that's it. Otherwise, you're not allowed to make copies of it or, you know, put, put take text from it and put it somewhere else. Now, what this specific legal language related to your license looks like will depend on the license and how you choose to demonstrate it. The most common way that I've seen is to include a statement about which license you're using, a link or to an explanation or the actual language of the license, and potentially additional text in cases where we have like reserved material clauses in the ORC license that I had previously mentioned. It is also a good idea to include preferred attribution language if you expect people to use your license frequently. This language, meanwhile, should contain the name of your work, the publisher, involved authors if they are not the publisher. So in this instance, for example, for me, I would put uh, Hessen Young Di as the author and then Hessen County as the publisher. Uh, also, we need to include uh, which license, mention which license we're using, and then also include a link uh, if we're referencing the license in that fashion, just like we did uh, in the text that I mentioned previously. Some licenses may require additional language to be contained in the attribution text or allow you to include additional language, like uh, making sure to include um, a statement about how use of this item does not equal endorsement or any form of relationship with either the author or the publisher. So here I, we have an example of one of my own games that utilizes the Creative Comrades license. Um, as you can see, I include the name of the product, my own name, publisher, uh, again, license, and here we have, uh, this is a hyperlink. Um, I really should have typed out the web address in case the game is printed or if like the link in the PDF breaks, but I didn't think about it at the time. Uh, one thing that you'll notice that I did add was uh, because this 
Creative Comrades is a rather uncommon license. Most people probably haven't heard of it before. Um, I did include basically a summary of a, essentially what the limitations and stuff are of the license itself. So here, of course, we say uh, basically you can use it for your own personal commercial purpose. And then we have some restrictions like uh, you can't use it if for bigoted or hateful uh, use. Um, uh, exceptions are if your uh, uh, your use or mentions of you know bigoted or hateful behaviors or activities relate to education criticism or parody. Um, uh, that any resulting materials can't be used in blockchain or NFT enabled platforms uh, or promote them or can be should and cannot be used to create a, a NFT. And then of course the the sort of comrade element of it uh, where uh, no one uh, who's uh, a, no commercial entity, whether they be an individual or a company uh, with a gross revenue of more than a million US dollars in any of the previous three fiscal years. Here it says tax years, but really we mean like fiscal years uh, of whatever country we're referring to. Uh, basically, you're not allowed to use this license. Uh, so like, you know, Many of you out there watching this video probably can, but like Wizards of the Coast couldn't use this license to basically take text from my game. Uh, anyway, um, so this is again just a kind of another example of a way that you might, if you're using a more uncommon license, you might want to explain some of the specifics. A, a variation on this particular theme uh, is can be found in if you have any of the Fate books. So in there, uh, oftentimes in the very first page, they'll uh, they state that in the on the legal page, uh, they state that the um, that the printed text itself is copyrighted, so you can't reference this directly. However, uh, there it does provide a link to a website. And as you can see here on the website, it actually has links to various SRDs uh, for not only their core and inside of each of these SRDs is the core rule mechanics, um, or rather the, the, the core elements and rule mechanics and stuff that are referenced in the books themselves. Um, so these are for not only their three basic rule sets, but also a lot of their toolkits that they have produced and uh, a number of their world books that they have also created uh, as well um, for the various different settings that they have that they have created to kind of go along with the core rule books themselves. If you were to uh, if you were want if you wanted to use these, they are actually licensed uh, under the uh, both Creative Commons, as you can see here, Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 license, uh, 3.0 license, sorry, uh, but also uh, OGL if you really want to use that. Um, so uh, and they also include, as you can see here, attribution text, just like we referenced. So if you were to make a uh, a, a basically a game based off of fate you can't use any of the language that's in here but the specific rules language that is in here is also in the SRD um, and then you would just include this license and referencing depending upon which product it was whether it was like you know uh, this this one or if you were using like if you were using fake core or condensed or or accelerated or one of the toolkits um, and you would mention the specifics of that one so again here we've got the work a page where you can find it who the publisher evil hat productions uh, uh, you know the authors and editors and developers of the text and then the reference to the license itself. So same thing, basically, that you can see there. In other cases, you might want to or be legally required uh, to put the full legal language of the license somewhere in your text. Uh, so in this so in this example of uh, Cepheus Deluxe from uh, Stella Gamma Publishing, uh, the full language of the open game a license for uh, 1.0a is actually published in the very back of the book along with the uh whoop, sorry <laughs> along with the long list of attributions uh the long chain of attributions included again this is uh towards the very back of the text like right in front of like the printout worksheets that are character sheets and stuff you might need to use
thank you all for joining me in this. Uh, I know that this might not have necessarily been the most satisfying uh, for people who were looking for more specific rough resources about individual licenses, uh, but there are resources that address a number of them a lot better than I ever could. Uh, some of those are going to be linked in the description down below. Uh, if you would like to learn some more about resources for uh, world building, uh, creating TTRPGs, or how you can support indie creators out there, then you should go ahead and like and subscribe, uh, because I will be starting to gear up for this year's Zine Quest soon enough, uh, as well as continuing to add to our SRD series, and also the new uh, Galaxy 24 Stellar world building series that just started last week. Uh, don't forget to rate your itch purchases, and have a good zone.